In this week's episode of Short Final, Richard builds up a sweat in the flight simulator while spending a day with the Silver Falcons. Jesse finds out what it's like on final approach to OR Tambo International Airport and why Fatima Jakut is no ordinary commercial airline pilot. And Tiana visits Donald Williamson's factory to find out what it takes to design and build your very own aeroplane. Hi, my name's Richard Southall and I'm with Short Final. Today we're going to go into Langebahnweg to discover what it's like to be a pilot of the Silver Falcons. Come with me, let's go inside. Just over an hour from Cape Town, Air Force Base Langebahnweg is home to the South African Air Force's Central Flying School and the Silver Falcons aerobatic display team. Richard, who used to be a crop spraying pilot and still flies his own Bosbork aircraft, goes behind the scenes to find out more about the Silver Falcons and their role within the Air Force. Roy, what do the Silver Falcons stand for? The Silver Falcons are officially known as the Cockpit Ambassadors of the Air Force. Our job is to go out to be the face of the Air Force, to demonstrate the skills inherent to all military trained pilots. So the nice thing is we represent all the lines. We've currently got uh, myself who's flown transport aircraft and a little bit of combat on the side. We've got Bo who's flown helicopters. So we diverse backgrounds which just goes to show that uh, what we do is not unique to a specific line. All military pilots have this uh, ability so we go out there to showcase the skills, instill national pride um, and uh, motivate the youth to join aviation. Unlike other aerobatic display teams around the world, the Silver Falcons are all full-time flight instructors at the Central Flying School. Tell us a bit about your day-to-day -day activities as an instructor. Yeah, Richard, um, normally the day starts with the morning meeting. Thereafter, we uh, get the student for the day. Um, at the moment, I've got a, a dedicated student that I'm busy flying with. Then we take him into the instructor's cubicle, brief him. Um, very important, thorough briefing uh, before we go out and fly. From there, it's usually walk out towards the aeroplane, fly the sortie. Once we complete with that, come back, debrief. And uh, then after the debrief is the paperwork that uh, starts, the never-ending paperwork. The Silver Falcons fly Pilatus PC-7 Mark II Astros that are also used by the SAF for ab initio training. I'm sitting in the cockpit of a PC-7 Mark II and Jacques, who is the left-wing pilot of number three of the Silver Falcons, is going to guide us through what is in this cockpit, and I must say, it looks rather intimidating, all these knobs, switches, and buttons. Would you like to explain a little bit to me? So it's just pretty much the same as all other aircraft. Uh, you pilot yourself, yes. so you have the stick. Yep. Uh, with the stick, you put, actually put your hand on, move the stick yep. around a bit, okay. back, back. You pitch the aircraft up, forward, forward. pitch down, left and right to roll the aircraft left and right. Yep. And then also, on the left here, you have the power control lever, which is called the PCL. Yes. You move it forward and back for power. And you have the pumps going on there. Okay. And then in, the, in front of the cockpit, you have the, what they call the PFD, the primary flight display. Okay. And the SFD, secondary flight display, the PFD gives you a basic flight information. So okay. if you're familiar with the um, ADI, horizon. we call yeah. it ADI, so artificial yeah. horizon. You have the airspeed on the left, altimeter on the right, and then also your compass, basically, okay. showing from the top. Um, on the right, we have the EID, the engine indicator display. It shows you the engine parameters, uh, how the yeah. engine is behaving. And now with this aircraft, everything is nicely on one display. With previous aircraft, like uh, Postbook, for example, you have uh, a lot of different individual displays. Everything is now nicely grouped into one display, yes. so you only Correct. have to look at the one display to know what's going on with the engine. Yeah. And also, mm -hmm. we have the radio stack here, we call the ARC2. Um, we have two radios and two navigation systems on here. Um, also, you know, VHF and UHF, not to get too technical. GPS over here, um, and that's pretty much it. There are five members that make up the air crew of the Silver Falcons, each with a specific place in their display sequences. What is your role in the Falcons? I'm Falcon number three. I'm on the left wing. If you look at my badge over here, uh, the gold colored in aircraft, that's where I sit in information. Generally in the left hand side, um, also we can see me if the leader comes in, he's flying upside down, inverted. We call it lead inverted. And I'm sitting on the left hand side and we do rollbacks off that. Another point we can see me also is um, when you do the heartbreaker. We come in towards the crowd and the, the formation splits. I will be the one on the right hand side, completing the heart. Langebahnweg is also home to two air servicing units that provide technical support to the more than 30 Pilatus aircraft on the base. Werner, this is a huge hangar and I see people working with tools everywhere. What's going on here? This is the uh, one hangar, it's a servicing hangar of two air servicing units. 
which is one of the service suppliers to the Central Flying School and to also to the Solar Falcons in essence. What they do for us is they do all the maintenance actions and tasks which is necessary throughout the lifespan of the aircraft, uh, which are various servicing, either minor or major ones, and also minor repairs, which is uh, often needed on any aircraft. Um, so as you can see, the guys are quite busy at this stage, and uh, in particular on engines right behind us. An aircraft's now being fixed and serviced. Who checks it out? Well, uh, it's obviously no, not just a normal pilot, it's a qualified maintenance test pilot. Um, there are a couple of us at the flying unit who has got a, a, such a qualification, which is the equivalent of a class 2 test pilot rating. And what we'll typically do is, depending on what maintenance action was uh, done on the aircraft, we'll get a particular set of checks and procedures which is uh, necessary to be done on such an aircraft. Um, those sets, uh, checks and procedures are contained within a, a test flying manual like this one. And uh, it is a very systematic and a very scientific process which we normally go through, um, measuring engine data, parameters, uh, and normal uh, aerodynamics and uh, handling characteristics of the aircraft against a very particular set uh, of norms and values uh, which should be attained with such a test flight. The Flying School also has two flight simulators that are used to train students safely and cost effectively on the ground. I'm with Bo Scalia and he flies number five position for the Silver Falcons and we are in the flight simulator room. Bo, can you tell us a little bit about the flight simulator please? Hi Richard, sure. Um, as you said we are in the simulator building at the Central Flying School. We are actually standing in one of two flight simulators that we possess here. Uh, it's a very state-of-the-art uh, facility um, as I'm sure you can see yeah. from, uh, from behind you here and basically what we use this flight simulator for is training of the students but in specific areas where we wouldn't want to necessarily use the main aircraft either for cost purposes or uh, in the case where we don't want the aircraft damaged etc we can simulate uh, emergencies on this aircraft um, and allow the students to deal with them and make mistakes without costing lives and, uh, and aircraft. With exact replicas of the Pilatus PC-7 cockpits, the simulators make very realistic training tools. Bo's going to take me through the startup procedure. Okay, Richard, so obviously at this point, uh, we would have gone through all the pre-starting checks according to a checklist and made yep. sure that everything is, is ready for the start. And now we're going to go through the start sequence itself. Okay, Richard, so I've got you uh, lined up now on runway 20 right here at Air Force Base Langebaan Weg. The aircraft is started and prepped, ready for takeoff, and we're going to give this a shot. Okay. Programmed with the exact runway configuration of the Langebaan Air Force Base and the surrounding geography, the simulators are as true to life as you can get. The difference here is that instructors can select any weather conditions, from sunshine to hail, to test the students' abilities. They can also simulate a number of different system failures to help prepare the students so that should something go wrong in the air, they don't panic and know exactly what to do. I can't believe how real it feels. You know, um, I even started working up a little bit of a sweat. But uh, this is absolutely incredible. While the display team wow the crowds with their displays in the sky, Falcon 6 ensures everything runs smoothly on the ground. I'm sitting with Ludolf, who is just been made the GLO. Ludolf, what is a GLO? The uh, GLO is the ground liaison officer for the uh, Silver Falcon display team. That is the uh, guy on the ground that does a lot of liaising with everyone involved uh, during displays. Uh, also, the uh, GLO is responsible for uh, the safety on the ground, uh, does a bit of a lookout, is able to communicate with everyone else, all the other parties involved, as such, uh, as a couple of other duties, but that is the main idea behind the GLO. With their instructor duties complete, it's time for the team to put their skills to the test and practice their display sequences. Let's check the QNA drop 1013, Unlike the blue and white livery of the Silver Falcon's display aircraft, the team will often practice in the original red and white painted Astras used every day at the Central Flying School to train the pupils. There is no difference between these planes and their display, except that the red and white ones aren't fitted with smoke systems, which of course make the sequences easier for the crowds to follow at an air show. It's 
often hard to tell how close they are to each other from the ground, but as you can see from this onboard footage, at times their wingtips are just meters apart. Following instructions from team leader Falcon 1, they coordinate their maneuvers and make it look easy, but it takes a lot of skill to fly these tight formations. So, the next time you see the Silver Falcons at an air show, see if you can identify the different pilots in the formations, and don't forget to have your camera ready for the signature fan break at the end of their display. Thank you for watching this episode of Short Final. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter for behind the scenes and upcoming episodes.